禅净理，了明和尚净理。Mr. the lineage gurus, or Mr. the venerable monk Liao Ming, or Mr. the master Sakya Zhen Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Karmapa, and homage to Master Nduktun Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar, and homage to the main deity of the group practice today, Padma Kumara. Sumu, Anjan Jato, Dharma masters, Dharma educators. Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma assistants, all disciples present here and over the internet. And our participating VIPs today are Madam to Ambassador Daniel Liao, the Republic of China's representative to Sweden and Norway, Dharma sister Judy. The law advisor to Dukda Foundation, the attorney Lu, and the PR director of the Tri Buddha Taiwan Temple, Dharma Brother Fermi Wang. Producers for the Kenny Gen Sang Xin Den from City ITV Taiwan, Dharma Sister Rebecca Xia Qi. Latin from Malaysia, Li Qing, and her daughter, Li Qi. And from Malaysia, Latin, Ce Hui. Dr. Ryan Zhong. Good evening, everybody. How do you do? So today we have practice Padma Kumara as the deity yoga. Padma Kumara deity yoga. And we all know about Padma Kumara for many times. There's no need to talk more about it, and we all know. Because we have mentioned it so before. Recently, I have written about the golden verses, uh, golden wise statements. And there were several articles about the impressions of Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. In the past, where my impression that were imprinted on my brain about the Pure Land and now have been written in my book, and you can understand. Someone said that what is uh, written in the Amitabha Sutra compared to the impression of the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. The impression of the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds are more in-depth what it is like to go to the Pure Land. What does it mean to be with the same mind? Our mind or heart at the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds, our thoughts are completely the same. They're all the same. That means it's the same mind or heart. 
and after you perform the merits, our merits are equal. So that's why with the same virtue, so the same mind, yet there is a Padma Kumara, and he or she is thinking of a happy thing, and then all other Padma Kumaras can feel it. So that kind of happiness is boundless. It's infinite. There's never any sufferings, and there are no physical bodies. They have bodies of light. In the realm of Padma Kumara, that every Padma Kumara is a body of light. So it's very fast for them to go to any pure land. It's like the speed of light. Although they have different bodies, individual body, because they have the same mind, heart, and thought, and because they have the same merits, so there's no higher or lower, left or right, or any different differentiation. So that's different from human beings. They don't have any physical bodies. And without physical bodies, you don't have any sicknesses or illnesses. And then you don't have any afflictions or troubles. And Lao Tzu had said that my own problem is by having this body, physical body. Without physical body, there is no karmic sicknesses, there is no afflictions, no diet or food and drink, none of those. You, you don't have any troubles about those. And there's also no ignorance. So those are the realm of light, of light bodies. And I wrote it in that book. The Golden Verses, The Impressions of Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. Typically, those who fly in the sky are birds, and those who swim in the water are fish. And the worms and, and beasts, animals, they walk on earth. But over there, there is no physical world. If all of a sudden you think of the best hotel is six stars, right? Say you want to stay at the Infinite Stars Hotel, then immediately it will appear. Then you can live in it. You can stay in it. You can make anything you wish. Whatever you want to eat, it will immediately appear. And it would taste delicious, not just the delicious foods from the ocean and the earth, but it's more like the sauce or ambrosia of the sages, the fruits and the food of the sages, and you get whatever you wish for. Uh, 
and they will appear with one thought and you will never get tired of it. It is such a wonderful place and you can transform it. So you would, in the pure land, you would never feel bored or meaningless you feel happiness because you have sufferings. Once you alleviate your sufferings, then you would feel happy. But over there, there's an everlasting happiness. And that's why it's called the bliss, everlasting happiness. It's bliss. And then uh, over there, if you think of your ex-girlfriend, she will appear too. There are many things beyond your imagination. And the fish can swim in the sky. And the birds can be in the water. So it's a real upside down from our physical world. Say if you are tired of staying there, then in the heavens there would be beautiful music appearing. And when you hear it, then your spirit will be uplifted, and then you would feel peace and ease. At the same time, you would know which light is your uh, close ones. You can feel it. Which light is uh, your close ones or loved ones? You don't need to talk with the language. As soon as you enter into my mind or heart, then you would understand. So the heart of the light enter into my heart, then you would understand completely. There are many extraordinary uh, phenomena of Padma Kumara, and they are truly authentic. They are truly truthful. They would never lie. Because Padma Kumaras are very truthful and very pure. They will never say, never deceive, and they never lie, and they don't have any reservations. Like what Simo just said, that there is the uh, Republic of China's uh, rap office here in Seattle, there's a secretary, and she asked Simu, what happens to grandmaster's leg? So the TECO in Seattle, the TECO office in Seattle, Secretary Zhuang made a phone call to Simu and asked what happens to grandmaster's leg. I just showed my leg to everybody this afternoon, and yet the taco is in Seattle. It's quite far away. And the Secretary Zhuang has not been here for many years. You know, good news never spread, but what happens? to my leg, 
or all immediately known to her. There are so many propaganda and broadcast departments here. It spread there immediately, only a few hours since this afternoon. And all the good deeds that Grandmaster did, the secretary Zhuang did not even know, but my injured legs are immediately known to her. And she has not been here for many years, and yet she knew. Wow. <laughs> it's a little bit like Maha Double Lotus Pond that when one person is some, something happens to one person, everybody knows. And usually she never, we never, she's never in contact with us. And now, immediately, she knew about this. And the secretary Chuang asked, is it really bad? And Simu's reply was that, if it's bad, then it will not get better. If it's not that bad, then it will be better. That's just nonsense. <laughs> How many years has uh, Secretary Zhuang been here? Many years. However, when she heard that Grandmaster hurt his leg, then she was pleased and made a phone call and checked around. So by having a physical body, a human being will suffer from illnesses. Uh, but if it is a body of light, then you will not suffer any illnesses. Where would the sicknesses come from? You know, our teeth. One day, you go to the dentist, and then he found out that you have a cavity. Then you have to fix, uh, to have a filling. So the dentist would know, right? The interesting thing is, once a human being dies, the teeth would never have any problems anymore. No more cavities. The teeth would stay after years. So this physical body has some uh, shortcomings, some faults. There are problems with the ears, the eyes, and the nose, algae, and teeth, and fallen hair, and fallen brows. <laughs> and also atlas feet, that's also a kind of fungus, and tetanus, tetanus, and cancer all over. The number one cause of death is cancer. Someone was fine and all of a sudden he has cancer. Then, from the happiest 
time they fall to the lowest point. And doesn't matter how rich you are, you still can't buy health. That's really the case. But if you become a body of light, then there, none of those would exist. Then you can fly and uh, travel in the sky. You can go wherever. If you are already bored in one pure land, you can go to another pure land. You can go anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere in the universe. So read that book about the golden wisdom verses and on the impressions of the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. You have great self-mastery, complete carefreeness, and you have nothing to gain, you have nothing to lose. It's the, great, the greatest happiness and the most beautiful music. That's heavenly music. And you see the best scenery right in front of you. And the most delicious food. And you can get it there. There's no tongue, but if you wish to eat any food, then it would appear right away. If you want to go to the Saha world and to see a certain person, you can also do that. It's really as you wish. It's a perfect pure land. And today we will talk a little bit about Lamde. Uh, point number six, the degree of upholding the realm, which is the body condition. When the body condition is not good, practice will not bring good benefit. When the body is healthy, there is still no benefit if you don't practice. When you are unhealthy and you practice, there is no benefit because you are unhealthy. If you are healthy, and yet you don't practice, of course, there's no benefit. It's all the same. You can understand this, right? So in the past, we say that they say that uh, you have to be sick about 30% in your spiritual cultivation, but no, that's not the case. For a sadaka, you have to be pay attention to your health. In order to ignite the inner fire, you have to have the, the woods, the resources. Like when I was little, I would uh, boil some hot water for my family members to take a bath. So I would put the firewood, and then I use paper to ignite the fire, to lit the fire. And we also use coal, which is gala in Japanese. First, I use paper to burn the firewood, and then also burn the coals. And then when the water boils, 
I would let my father bathe first, and then mother, and then my sisters. So we, we need to have coals and the smaller firewoods and paper. And then I also have to fan the wind. And it is the same when you want to ignite your inner fire. You have to have the materials, the firewoods. And your breathing is like for the wind. And your materials inside, you also need uh, paper, firewoods, and coals in order to ignite the inner fire. And where would the coals come from? So we have the wind because I have taught a lot of methods to practice the wind and the coals and the firewoods and paper are the nutrients that you absorb through your body. Like the light drops also come from the nutrients. In order to ignite the inner fire, you also need nutrition. That's why bodily health is extremely important. It's not that you have to be 30% sick in spiritual cultivation, like you're extremely hungry and you're still meditating. So like Sakyamuni Buddha at that time was also uh, suffering from hunger. And he recovered because he drank the lamb's milk of the shepherd girl in order to enter into meditation. So it wouldn't do if he didn't eat anything. So in order to meditate, you need the materials. Bodily health is extremely important, and any spiritual cultivator should pay great attention to their health. Point number seven, the encouragement of the awe of food and drink. At the beginning of practicing, eating nutritious food and maintaining a dignified or awe-inspiring, graceful and calm manner will improve your health and purity. It speeds the entrance into meditation. There's no need uh, to hurry. You, you just want to flow naturally. Every afternoon, I would uh, do a painting, one painting per day. But this afternoon, I did not paint. Actually, it's not that I did not paint, but I ripped off the painting. There's so many days after coming back. Even usually when I rip a painting, I would paint again. But today, I did not. Only today. So there was not even a single painting today. Because after I painted, I ripped it off. I tore it. I so not calm, relaxed, and graceful enough. So just be calm no matter what and always be joyous, always in good mood. Because I wasn't in good mood, so I painted. <laughs> and then I tore it, so I didn't feel good. Why? Because there are some impure voice in my ears. That's because 
the power of spiritual cultivation is not strong enough because after listening to some words that are not supposed to be spoken but was spoken by someone and it affected my mood. But strictly speaking, a spiritual cultivator should not be influenced by anything. You should not have good or bad mood. You're always a very graceful, calm, natural, then you are not troubled at all. But why, by listening to those words, you felt very disturbed? Why? Because someone spoke those words and then spoke to my ears, spoken to my ears. And I felt that why someone is like that? How could that be? Master De Hui once told me, please don't speak at the dining room. Don't just say it as you like, because the listeners may not understand, and then they spread it all over the world, and their rumors and gossips and they all mixes of truth and false, all kinds of rumors. But after hearing that, you shouldn't be angry because as a guru, it should be an example of sentient beings. It should be a good example, exemplar for the sentient beings. There is no need to have my tem temper raised. I should have painted calmly and in a good manner and still paint. I should have discarded my uh, disturbances and still continue to pain really well. Spiritual cultivation should be like that. You should never be disturbed by anything. I am just talking about myself because my spiritual cultivation and my practice has not been enough. That's why I have risen my temper there should not be any disturbances, uh, distraction to my mood. Even with the leg, it, you just need to cure it. That's it, right? There's no other problems with my body, right? You know, the four limbs or the five limbs are still healthy and complete. And you're already better than other people. At 74, you're already much better than others. Is there anything to to regret who made the report the Xinhai Luopan of Taiwan there was a professor Ye in Taiwan was talking about Xinhai Luopan on television. If you have heard of it, please raise your hand. Hmm? At 66. His lab 
and analyzed it really well and deceived many followers. So that's why being 74, you have won over other people. I should have maintained my mind and be very tolerant and calm. I should not uh, get angry so easily. But this afternoon, I did this after hearing these few words. I, um, I apologize to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. I shouldn't have been like that. Uh, so good health and purity would speed your entrance into meditation. So having pure body and mind, then you would have meditation. Otherwise, you will not. So, and if you're unhealthy, you will also not have any meditation. That's why you have to be healthy, and your body and mind are pure in order to generate meditation. If you don't tonify or remedy your health first in an unhealthy condition, Practice will not result in meditation. If your mind is not on the practice, it is also not a good idea to practice. Instead, you should regularly consume nutritious food. That's why you have to eat good nutrition in order to cultivate spiritually in Tantrayana. Because you practice using your body to ignite your inner fire, to practice light drops, to practice the illumin illumination of your body in order to reach uh, light all over your body. You need good nutrition in order to ignite the inner fire, to generate light drops, to have a luminosity in your channels. So you need to eat healthy food. So it's written here, you should regularly use food. That's how it is. There are two important things is a tonic using medicine or herbal medicine and tonic using food. So in Tantric Buddhism in Tibet, they can tonify their body using medicine or using food. They need both of this. It's not by eating vegetarian food then you have no calls. Then you, how can you ignite the fire without coals? Because that's just water. Right? Think about it. You need both water and fire. In order to ignite the inner fire, you need coals. And what are coals in terms of food? Sometimes. Hanifa, where is Hanifa? She's translating. Sometimes you give me IE. It's like a, a natural gel produced from seeds. That's a very cold uh, characteristic. 
it can eliminate the heat in your body. But you need fire in the tantric practice. <laughs> but if you give a big bowl of IE, then it's too cold. I just need a little bit. Then I feel that my fire is almost extinguished. No more fire. So Simo always said that my fire is very strong because I eat too much fire food and eat less uh, cooling food. If I eat too much fiery food, then I eat a little bit of cooling food. So I need both fire and water. Because you need the fire to evaporate the water, to become vapor. And then you use the vapor, which is the qi, to open the channels and then to the four limbs and to all parts of the body. And point number eight, the mind yogic experience on judging the signs of warmth as you wish. In the visualization practice, any high and low yogic experiences inside the body, use the clear mind to understand and control it to neither be broken nor established, neither increase nor decrease, just let it be naturally. And the above eight key formulas are the most precious queen essence of all visualization practices. It doesn't matter how we practice, all kinds of phenomena that appears are considered occurring naturally, which is it's not over or completely none of them. So you're in the middle way, just naturally. There will be many signs and experiences like seeing light. You use your third eye and you are able to see light. Wow, so many people coming to listen to the sutra, the heads, and whether they have physical bodies or not. It seemed that there are few people coming to the temple today, but actually there are many more. As soon as I close my eyes, there's so many heads here. <laughs> of course, none without heads, many heads, all the way to the, uh, the park there, the lot in front. That's my, that's your experience, your feeling. When you want to see, then truly there are many, many of them coming, listening to the Dharma teaching from nearby. Maybe over a thousand people. Yeah, a thousand people. But the sutra or the Dharma teaching tonight is, is not that great. Why are they coming tonight? Really, there are many people. So you can see something that other people cannot. Why? Because when you calm your mind, and then your mind or your heart is like mirror, 
and then you open your eye and the light entered into the mirror and the mirror would reflect and then you would be able to see all the people you would be able to see everything that's a kind of sign or yogic experiences and sometimes you would be able to see dots of red lights in the sky or you can see just a red light everywhere or you see a lot of lights, white lights, white drops of lights or you would be able to see a round prachna light where the Buddhas are inside it and there are many Buddhas and Bodhisattvas descending from the sky and you would be able to see so many prachna lights, round prachna lights sparkling in the sky, so many Padma Kumaras, you would be able to see them all. This is called uh, signs and uh, yogic experiences, uh, circles of lights filling the whole sky. Even when you experience such signs, there's no need to be so uh, ecstatic about it. That would be no good. Just be natural and place your mind on the sky and just let it be natural. It's okay whether you see it or not. There's no need to talk about it. Just let it be. Just like that. And you just live very naturally like ordinary people. Although you know about a lot of things and you can understand a lot of things. But in normal life, you're just like normal people. So you place your mind on nature. There's a tantrika of a high level who said that form is no other than emptiness and emptiness no other than form. Form is emptiness and emptiness is form. If you don't rely on this concept, what would you say? This high level tantrika said just natural. Be natural. If you see form, then it is form. If you see emptiness, then it is emptiness. Then you just be natural between form and emptiness. And you just go between them. That's fine. There's no need to be so attached to emptiness or to existence or form. And you just harmonize between the two naturally. And then you place your mind on the origin, the original point. That's what he taught us. Late at night. What time is it now? 9.30. It is late at night, and when the kid is going to sleep, he's crying. There's some kids that would cry at night. And the dad decided to sing a lullaby to please him. And only after a few verses, the neighbor said, it's better to let the kid cry. It must have been awful. That was his joke. 
the wife was practicing singing, and the husband told the wife, please don't practice anymore. Why? I need to practice my singing, my soprano singing. And then the husband, hearing your voice, the neighbors say that I am beating you. I'm beating on you. That's a singing practice. Where should she go practicing that? The mom gave the twins a bath and then placed them on the bed. One of them laughing heartily. And mom asked, why are you laughing? And the kid replied, you, you bathed my brother twice, but you, ne you haven't bathed me. This did happen. Most twins look like if you don't pay care, close attention, then you bathe the same one twice. And the other one, not the other one. So in spiritual cultivation, in our yogic responses, it teaches us to be natural about those yogic responses. But you can tell your guru or your spiritual friends, and they can help you analyze what levels you have reached. This and they beat me, and I didn't say anything, and then gave me a chili pepper, I didn't say anything. And the third, they gave me a beautiful lady, and then I admitted, I said something, and then on the fourth day, I was still expecting that beautiful lady, but instead I was being executed. So you should follow the rules. There was a lady that went to the bank. And the bank lady asked, can you, can you prove that you are you? And then she took a mirror and took a look at herself and said, yeah, I am, I am me. So she should have uh, give her ID, but sometimes in answering a question can be misunderstood. The woman told the man, you know, I warn you, my husband will come back in an hour. And then the man said, but I didn't do anything wrong. And the woman said, yeah, I know. Because if you want to do it, then you only have one hour.
How come there's a joke like this? 其实那个有时候写笑话的心仪，他有给我写一些笑话。心仪。Give me some jokes. I put it there. 是是给他讲，也是临时的，我忘掉了。Because I forgot to bring it, so I just. 自己那边的家，啊这边的家。I put it at my other house. 昨天晚上没有笑话。And here, all of a sudden, I realized that I didn't have any jokes to tell, so I just rip two. Pieces of paper. There is an older lady that is illiterate, but every day she has to listen to the weather forecast. And one time, at dine at dinner, she asked. <laughs> it's like partial part, like part, partly cloudy or partly rainy, and she's asking where is partly because it's rainy there. So that's why in our inner fire practice, you need to understand. Because if you don't, then there's nothing you can do. Like in the article, what is the good, uh, good condition and bad condition? So the good condition is when you're healthy. And bad condition is when you are unhealthy. So that's the words that they use. So you need to know what is good condition. That actually means healthy. And bad condition is unhealthy. You, know, you need to understand what they mean. This uh, there's a long line to the toilet. And someone said, Oh, I, I really can't hold it anymore. Can you let me in first? And the person in front was uh, holding fists and then spoke through the teeth. You, you at least you can still speak, <laughs> and the people in front couldn't even speak anymore. There is a little boy who is working and studying. 小王 work and study. At night, he cut. He's a butcher, cut pork. And in the morning, he work at the hospital. In the morning, he wheeled an elderly man to the operating room. Where are you bringing me? You're a butcher. After an implant surgery, the patient woke up and asked, "What happened?" And the doctor said, oh, "You were in an accident." And am I at the hospital? Strictly speaking. That most of you are in the hospital, but there's a small part of you that's not. So sometimes this happens during an accident. This, a 光棍小王
剪刀一条，剪刀一条手帕。Uh, a single man, Xiao Wang, got a handkerchief with a, a name A Xiang written on it and a phone number. So Xiao Wang was really pleased and dialed the number. Is Miss A Xiang there? And after a while, there's a voice. Grandma, that's the phone is for you. This is a joke. Ah, I personally, I personally feel like this. After practicing Buddhism for a long time, a very long time. I have strong feelings toward uh, disciples, fellow disciples, and I hope that every one of us would be uh, sincere and earnest in our spiritual cultivation and don't get distracted into other things and don't be so disturbed by whatever happens. doesn't matter whoever says something about me or this person or that person saying something to me or all kinds of gossips and true and false. They are not important at all. The most important thing is between the guru and the disciples, we have very strong feeling toward each other. And we use this feeling to motivate each of our uh, spiritual cultivation that we go step by step. And this way, you will have attainments in the future. And don't always listen to all, all those rumors and gossips and be affected by them. And don't always think what you see is the real thing, is the truth. That's not necessarily so. Very often, what you see is not always the truth. And the same with what you hear is not always the truth. And whatever you feel, now we are practicing Buddhism, and we regard the Buddha Dharma as number one, and the rest are secondary. What we have to learn is our good manner and spiritual cultivation and our practices, Dharma practices. At the same time, we should have a good manner. And please don't spread the rumors. And in your behavior, in your conduct, you don't say nonsense. 
and you want to purify your ears. So even when you hear words, you don't want to think more about it. And lastly, you would be able to gain enlightenment because Buddha Dharma is always number one. Although we live in this world, but our lifespan is not that long. And you can, you will not go back alive. So everybody is the same. There is no need to be so haggle uh, uh, about it. So between people, there is no need to care so much about anything. Because if you take it lightly, it's no big deal. Because our lifespan is about the same, more or less the same. So everybody will die. You will never be able to return alive. So there's no need uh, to be so concerned when we are so alive.